everybody. Welcome to Creative Block. We're your hosts, V. And Sean. We interview people in creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We ask people on YouTube and Patreon and Instagram. We're not using Twitter as much anymore. If they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. Today, we have with us Alex Klein. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's like, I'm so excited to bring you on, Alex, because I've seen you a bunch of like comics events. So you both do like indie comics and publications. Also, like you had like a little illustrated book with like a picture. Yeah, my and life. A, yeah, that one was so cool. And you have like such a great sense of like color and, and shapes. And um, Thank you. you've worked with Sean. I've never worked with you, but... I have met you through our friend that we have in common, Kevin Bailey, who is organizing movie nights. (laughs) Yes, long live movie nights. That was the best. (laughs) Love that. I feel like I learned a lot about cinema, the cinema. Oh, yeah? uh, Yeah. From that. Yeah. Do you have any favorites from that? I feel like uh, that's where I figured out about Muriel's wedding and uh, my own private Idaho. It's like... Dude, yeah. my own private One Idaho was I've ever seen. It was awesome though. It was like so crazy. Yes. It... Oh my god, it's beautiful. Uh, it's For... just like Keanu. Oh, that's a weird motor guy. Uh it's just Keanu riding on the back of a motorcycle for like two hours. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and being very angsty yeah. too. There's like I think yes. there's like a whole scene yeah. where he's just like, but that's his chick though. That's why we love him. He's like running away from his dad, right? Isn't that the whole thing? I think so. Like, Honestly, I just that's rich. Oh, that I just remember the gay scenes, and I was like, "That's really I, that was yeah, what I was into." Beautiful, yeah, yeah. Movie night was amazing. It was like a great time for animation people to get to know each other and hang out at Kevin's like amazing Pasadena house with spiders everywhere. Yeah, the spider mansion. So a little bit of like lore for everybody like listening to Creative Block. So when I moved for the first time in LA. I was already like 26, I think. And I moved from France and I didn't really know anybody in LA. And I was like, I need to have roommates. So then I I, I won't be as depressed <laughs> and I can meet more people. <laughs> and I just, I put on Facebook at the time, I was, I put like, I'm looking for roommates in LA. And that, and I came across Teresa Potts and Kevin Bailey, who were both absolutely amazing and sweet. And Kevin was the one in the house to throw this movie night uh and it was every week right it was every wednesday and he invited everybody was that often it felt oh, like gosh. it was very often no it was very often and they like made posters they made animations yeah. they made a little so it was oh kevin and uh, ben uh, ben kraus ben kraus who's also like yeah. the writing is so funny so funny it yeah, felt like they did these like 3d animations of themselves like in these like tea poses and they were like yeah. doing like these really funny talk. oh it, they're so funny it felt like uh what are you gonna say that adult swim type of like content or like very know, early yeah. internet and and they had they had like put together this just roaster of movies that were so out there because oh shoot which one was the one where there's like this lady and the pool and it's like three very women? dreamy that was I like it's a... three women three women yeah that one was crazy yeah where they're painting yeah oh my god i, uh, I... that's uh sissy spacek and who's the woman from the shining uh oh yeah 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 oh shoot what's her name you know sean help us out the shining uh, i haven't i haven't seen i was i wasn't invited you weren't invited. Was, no, you've seen, seen the shining. You've seen the shining, though. No, I don't know. Shelly, no, oh, Shelly no. Duval. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but honestly, Sean, I kind of met you through a little bit other people that I met through movie nights because movie yeah, nights. Yeah, it was some pickle and peanut folks. Yeah, and and then I met Matt uh, through movie nights, and then drink and draw because you and Matt were doing drink and draw. I thought you were about to say Drake and Josh. Drake yeah, Josh. we were Drake and we were Jake and Josh LARPers, and we used to <laughs> pretend to be Drake and Josh, uh, and we would 
we would invite people to that and no one would come but we oh, said you know that's how we started this. off no oh, but one one similar. time kevin got kind of like he didn't get mad but he he did say like <laughs> if you don't show up to move at night you're gonna get <laughs> a demerit <laughs> oh yeah i forgot about the demerit system yeah that's so funny they took it seriously Seriously. Wait, how do they how do they punish you? Do they give you like a badge? They like a, it's in, like, like a the corner. stinker badge? Yeah. Stinker <laughs> badge. I'm gonna try that. I like I like th- I, I've never tried threatening people that don't come to my events. Yeah. But it's actually I feel like it's a good <laughs> technique if you come up with a like if you find a way to be funny about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just <laughs> I think it did work because I think after the demerit, people showed up. <laughs> That's so funny. A- Alex and I met on um regular show. Regular show, yeah, long live. Yeah, yeah that- I uh, I, you- I was dude. I was so I was so nervous because I mean, like I I was I was, I was coming oh in God. on the last season, and everybody knew what they were doing, and uh and had most most of them had been on the show for a long time, and yeah, I, mean, I was I coming on and last, and so I was kind of the same. Yeah, I I I feel like that's where our kinship was. I I feel like we yeah. we were like, like okay, like we're like a little bit new, <laughs> and uh, we don't you know yeah <laughs> don't know what we're doing. But <laughs> I mean you know I I, I think that uh uh it, it was it was a lot of fun though. It it I I I look up upon that time fondly. Oh, I had a blast. and also it was a huge learning experience, dude. Yeah, everyone was so smart and hilarious. Yeah, and I'm still super good friends with all those people. Ryan's my roommate still. Oh, I forgot about that. Really? That's, that that, that yeah. rules. Yeah, you didn't know that. I yeah. forgot. Holy shoot! Like, did he? Did he kind of? Did he say that on the pod when he came? I forgot when he came on the pod. I forgot. He, I did, I asshole. forgot that. Oh my god, <laughs> that's so cool Little though. Shit. Little... <laughs> <laughs> shit. Well, halfway through this episode, we'll invite ryan on and and we can have a guest feature no <laughs> no we want this whole episode to be about you i'm just joking this is about me <laughs> but so alex was um, a regular show your first animation gig or um, did you have no, like- i actually started on um i started on cosmos uh space time odyssey over at six point harness before that and how did you break into to working on that well before that i was on Oh no, that was the first one. Yeah. So I when I was in college, I made a a short film. It was about a couple who had a baby. That was Elmo. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, uh six point liked it and they gave me a job. And did they so yeah, I started doing layout. How did they find out about your short? Was it posted on YouTube? Was it uh shown at festivals? Oh yeah. So um my friend Joel Trussell, who created co-created pickle and peanut Mm -hmm. which sean and i worked on joel went to um ut which is where i I went to school ut is uh where is that university of tennessee and whenever i graduated i i just showed him my film and he was like cool yeah whenever you move out to la we should hang out and i got a copy with him and he was like cool i you know i don't really have work for you but uh i used to work at this studio called six point maybe they might have some work for you so he sent my film over there wow this is such a weird looking elmo <laughs> um i like this little drawing wait is this who's this up here is this uh the guy from uh forgetting sarah marshall <laughs> no i was i was drawing a Keanu, Keanu reeves, Keanu Keanu reeves. reeves. <laughs> he needs a motorcycle <laughs> sorry I'm a, I'm a little late i'm a little late on it but yeah i was, I was trying i was trying to draw him on a motorcycle He's a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, you're doing the motorcycle. <laughs> we're, no, we're both doing we can, I mean, you can draw on it too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking of what's his name? What's the British guy's name from um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Uh, help me uh, out. Russell. I Russell... can't think of anything to do. Is it Russell, Russell Crowe? Yeah. No, wait. <laughs> Russell Crowe. No, no, Russell Brand. <laughs> Russell Brand. It's a different Russell. 
Yeah, it yeah. does. I mean, yeah, yeah. Anyways, he does look like God, that. I'm though. so sad. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep. Well, the um, problem is you keep just... trying to remember uh, actors' names live uh, on the podcast, and so so if you just <laughs> avoid, you could just memory. say the actor from this movie and then move on. But you're but you're like let's let's like <laughs> yeah. hyper fixate on this thing let's I can't stop remember. Here. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's gonna be okay, really interesting on. if I can remember Animation. this this actor's name. <laughs> Yeah, uh, animation. <laughs> this is what people will love. Um, storyboarding. Yeah, that's the- Cosmos. The- Bojack. Bojack is where we go next. Uh, all my friends moved on to Bojack after uh, Cosmos. Uh-huh. So that's naturally where I went next. And we did design. So what season did yeah, you... Uh, what was the season that you joined on Bojack? Uh, oh, first season. It was like right when it was getting started. First season? Yeah, it's at the very beginning. What? Yeah. My friend, uh, my colleague. Oh, you got in on the ground floor. I, know, I didn't even know what I had to. I like left right afterwards to go work on regular show. <laughs> I should have. I mean, I loved work on regular show, and I'm not sad that I did that. But part of me is like, huh, I wonder what would have been if I had stayed around for the whole thing on BoJack. But I did come back. Yeah, to... but like I guess season one, it wasn't unionized yet, right? No. When you were on season one, it wasn't union. They only yeah. union. And regular show was union. Yeah. So I'm guessing the pay was better, or am I wrong? Maybe it was so much better. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot better. Well, you got in and you got out. You got in and you got out. Got in, I got in, I got out. <laughs> so you were doing layouts on Cosmo, yeah. and then on Bojack, you were doing character design. On Bojack, I was doing character design and like building puppets. Yeah, yeah. How did you manage to jump from it? Um, one gig to another like uh, in terms of like skill because i feel like usually a lot of people can get kind of anxious about animation in the sense that it's like once you start one path you stay on that path forever like if you're a character designer you're going to be a character designer forever but what's really cool about your career is that you've kind of moved around a bunch between all the different skills do you feel like you had to update your portfolio or like how did you kind of go from layout to character design and rigs uh yeah yeah that's a good question i feel like i kind of did it out of pure survival you know i it really just it was early (laughs) enough that like i I honestly didn't really have the portfolio for either thing at the time i really was faking it until i made it um and i had friends that um where i mean it wasn't i mean i i mean i definitely like had the skills to do the jobs but like i didn't necessarily like have like all of the experience to like roll on to this stuff but like i don't know it's just like hey this is so, like people were rolling on to something and they were like hey there's like opportunities do you want to try for it and i was just like i need to do something and like i am in la i'm fresh and like don't really want to go work at urban outfitters again so like i kind of need to go try this <laughs> So I put that on my resume that I'm fresh. I'm fresh. <laughs> uh, I'm fresh. I'm in I'm in LA. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon Fresh, baby. Um, I'm Amazon Fresh. Yeah. I put my GPA on my uh, regular show resume. Oh, really? They, JT just laughed at me. He's like, don't. He's like, don't do that ever again. Wait, can you tell us your GPA? No, I'm not gonna. What was your GPA? I mean, I'm. I'm proud of it. It must have yeah. been good if you put it on. <laughs> all of all of all of all of the comments are gonna be like, tell us, tell us, I tell think it us. Was a four. The the fans want to know the inside deets. Yeah. I'm I'm guessing I'm gonna guess four. Yeah, I think it was that, but I don't know anything. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, it seems to be a deciding factor as to for you breaking into the animation industry and your dream job. So <laughs> so so it's important. Everybody... Just so you know, you need to put your <laughs> GPA on your resume if you want to get that break-in role. You, he was like, we got to hire this nerd. <laughs> we only want nerds on this show, dude. GPA is huge. GPA is huge. <laughs> GPA is huge. Write that down, underline so, it, start Study it. up, kids. Don't miss school. That's so funny. But uh, th- does that mean you had your GPA for six-point harness and bojack and regular show 
and it's <laughs> isn't that so stupid and it's only until you got on regular i had no idea what i was doing i was like such a loser <laughs> no but i just think it's really funny i was just like floundering i mean it's just funny like how you can just like kind of like fall into like you know you just kind of you can kind of figure it out eventually i feel like it's maybe this is bad advice but it's like it is kind of amazing like what some of the drawings can do mm -hmm. for you like i was kind of a bumbling idiot at the beginning but like the drawings were kind of doing a lot of the talking for yeah. me back then. Well, the thing is, if it ain't broke, sense. don't fix it. Like you got three jobs based yeah. off of having this GPA <laughs> on on your resume. And so like, why, what's the incentive to change it? But what, but what I love yeah. is that JG like is the first person here. to be like, listen, I have some advice for you. Like <laughs> all, all the previous people were just like, well, just, <laughs> I know. No, I hilarious. thank you, JG, for, for, for taking that off of my resume. <laughs> like everybody before that. For fixing yeah, that for me. Just like, we'll just let me. They let me just yeah. roll, you know? They let me it's just it's, it's like working, it's like going to a bunch of brunches and you have spinach in your teeth and no, and no yeah. one's telling you. They're Nobody all just letting you go you. forward. Yeah, exactly. Wow, he's a real one for that, JG. I guess so. <laughs> and wait, so I'm I'm gonna go back to the timeline a little bit. So, um, what was the season of BoJack that you left, and what was the season of regular show that you joined? Like, was it like season two of BoJack? Uh, season, season one okay. of BoJack, I left, and then I went to season seven of regular mm. show. And I stayed for seven and eight, the last two seasons. Can you talk a little bit? And then I did go back to the last season of BoJack for character designs. Oh, again. nice. And then it was yeah, Union. For the last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we did get Union. It was good. Can you talk a little bit about the test for oh, um, yeah. regular show? We have uh, Sean's story for like taking the test, but I want to hear your story for I, taking the test. I actually regular took show. the test twice in the same year. <laughs> they didn't know I took it twice. I don't think you're allowed to do that, but oh yeah, I did do it. <laughs> my first test was really bad, and then my second one, I'm pretty proud of. So, but yeah, it was good. Um, do you remember anything from it? Yeah, they. It's the test where they go into the. Um, they're like drinking the slushies, and they get the brain freezes. Did you do that one? So I only did a writing test. So I didn't do a storyboard test because they basically they called they they called me someone from um Cartoon Network called me on a Thursday night and they were like can you come in for a possible oh interview gosh. tomorrow to possibly start on on Monday. Whoa. And um and it, it, it they someone had fall, fallen through. Um, I it and was. I was like a last minute replacement and I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. But, but I, I had, um, I was friends with Helen Joe, oh, yeah. who was the partner of Calvin and, and I just got, I got recommended that they, they were like, Hey, this person's funny. And the last thing I had worked on kind of was drawn similarly. And so, so I ended up just taking the writing test. So did, did you, did you have to take a writing test too, or, or was it uh, just a stor uh, storyboard test? Uh, do you remember what the what, what your test was? The writing test. It was like do this, and then the second it was like it's kind of like an ad ad lib test of like Rigby running over mm -hmm. with like a empty bubble, and then you have to like write in what he's yelling at Mordecai, and then like the second one is like but make it funnier, you know? It's like that whole thing, ah. <laughs> and it's like oh, that's oh. funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was like one where it's like all the characters like playing telephone, like they're whispering in each other's ears and there's a bunch of bubbles and you have to like write what they're saying to each other. It comes back around. Because some of our listeners don't even know what a storyboard test is, uh, let alone a writing test. Yeah. So so for regular show, they they had a storyboarding test, but then they also had a, a, a little test that was like it was like a it almost felt like a like a kid's worksheet. Like, yeah, a, like one of those totally. busy worksheets with like mind games or puzzle games. <laughs> it sort of felt like that, but you had to fill out these like almost like word games or like they, like they had like characters with empty speech bubbles and you had to try to write some dialogue about the situation that they were in or whatever. Um, and that's because on regular show, uh, storyboard artists also wrote all the dialogue. It was a storyboard driven show. So, so I like uh, picking your brain about this yeah. because not only is that a show with a test, but it's also a show with an unconventional 
test as far as many shows are concerned uh yeah i had fun with it it was just weird because i didn't hear i took two tests and then i didn't hear anything back for like eight months i feel like and then i was like oh shit this is happening oh, wow. like and then when i did hear like it kind of changed my whole life all of a sudden oh my god oh and then like i had like a panic attack like that night and was just like i can't do this oh. like i started i remember like this is like very dramatic sounding but i do remember crying that night and then being like okay pull it together oh <laughs> and then like yeah and then it was like awesome i feel like we've all had like a cry story dude but but the thing is is on on that show it felt like you had a chance like it was okay to learn like like i, I when i talked to owen dennis my my storyboard partner like he was like yeah honestly it took me like a whole season he he said that it took him a whole season before he actually felt really comfortable on the show. Yeah. So 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 I, I think that um like for my first episode I bore, I storyboarded a pass and then like I had to redo most of it. Oh yeah. And um but 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 JG himself actually sat down in a room with me and thumbnailed out an example like like an example whole scene of like how he would storyboard Whoa. the scene and like. And, and like took extra time that's like an education right there that's how it i think felt for mm. me and i was flabbergasted at how fast he yeah. did it like he like he he basically showed me that like like he he could thumbnail an episode of regular show in its entirety like in like one hour uh, or on, or on, or or, on, or under and like he, he just did it so fast well, they, i mean they have such a formula to that show yeah. like they've been doing it for ever no but it's still like pretty it, it still shows the focus though because i feel like like for example like now we've all worked for like 10 years plus right in animation do you guys feel like you could thumbnail an 11 minute in less than an hour <laughs> Only if it was really, really simple. Only if it was like yeah. a really, really simple show, and I was doing like the main beats. Like if I was, yeah. if I was maybe doing like the like the smallest stick figure sure. beats, and I was letting it be just like a very simple cartoony show, I I might be able to get through most of that. Oh, I I wanted I wanted to ask you because because you basically you had gone from BoJack Horseman, which was a script driven adult comedy show to this um storyboard driven show you know regular show what what was I, and, and not only that it was it was the polar opposites it was the, the the first season of bojack horseman where they're probably still figuring things out mm. and and what to do and then you went to a show that had been around for yeah. seven seasons and had all these rules already mm -hmm. established what was the switch like in between yeah having like like basically a thing where everyone's like like figuring it out and flying by the seat of their pants versus um like there's like a whole like book of rules that you can follow right. or did you notice that difference at all i mean and that's okay if you didn't <laughs> you know i was just curious no i did i did notice that i'm trying to take myself back to that place because that was a pretty big stark difference to be honest i feel like working on bojack was like almost like summer school or like summer break you know i was working mostly during the summer for one thing but also like oh. you were saying like uh yeah i feel like we were very much left to our own devices which is strange because i heard after i left that production like s season two is like kind of when things started to get a little bit stricter and like that's when things got a little bit more dialed down like that's when they started to the rules started to get in place a little bit more i heard season like when i was on the show season one at least in my sphere i don't know about borders and everybody else in my sphere mm -hmm. i didn't have too hard of a time with rules and things it felt pretty breezy but then yeah going over to regular show it was like i was a, a journey artist so i was like i didn't i'd never boarded before so like I was under Maddie. Maddie was teaching. So it was just a complete job change difference that probably felt the, like the biggest difference. Yeah, exactly. It was like going to school for the first time, you know, like learning everything for the first time. Whereas like when I was in Bojack, it was weird because like I hadn't really done that job before, like in animate, like rigging puppets and stuff. But like I I've designed characters before. So like I felt fairly confident in that role. But Bojack was like... uh 
a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot of like, kind of like keeping my mouth shut and kind of just observing people and like being like, feeling like, feeling like the youngest person, like feeling like everyone else in the room was like smartest, funnier, funniest person, which is not a bad, not saying like anything ill against myself, but just like feeling like I had a lot to learn from these people. That's, humble. That's humbling though. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I just felt like mm. this, that was like a really special place to be, you know, regular show. Like a, like a gold, gold. So was Bojack. I don't mean to say that either, but like it, just in terms of like my interests and like trying to learn and grow as like a writer. And like at that time I wanted to grow as like a, well, I don't know. I was like trying to break into boards. And so like, that was like really crucial for trying to get that career started. So, Yeah. That's, that's crazy to think that you like your first uh, board gig was regular show because that's definitely a show where not because it's like board driven. So like landing a board driven show as a first gig is like as a first board gig is like very uh, it's just like a lot because you have to do so much. You have to like draw, do the layout, write everything, be funny. It was challenging. <laughs> Uh, I think yeah. <laughs> I think online comics helps to show that stuff a lot too. I think all everyone at regular show, sure. or not everyone, but a lot of people there were getting their jobs from their Twitter comics and stuff like that because they were proving that they could draw and write from that. Did you also have like a web comic website? Did you post your web comics at the time? Somewhere? Um, I did have comics. I don't remember what I was posting. Oh, but I did have. Um, I think my Bill and Jean. No, oh, that was after. I forget what job. What got me my regular show stuff. I don't know. It's just making stuff. Do you, Do you guys have a an example in your career where you said a thing and you wished you had an editor? <laughs> to oh edit my that god! Out? There's so many. There's so many <laughs> in the rooms. Or... <laughs> oh my god! I'm trying to think if there's one Off that's the top of my head, like particularly stands out. That I should... Well, not that stands out, but that I should say on the podcast, because <laughs> uh, because I mean, like the reason why I want it taken out of my life is because it was probably embarrassing. Is I don't want people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think I don't, it's nothing cancelable, but it's yeah, just embarrassing. Same. I think probably. Let me think. I asked the question, so I don't have to come up with an answer. Oh wow, you're so exempt. <laughs> you're exempt. I try to think if I can come up with one too. Um, I like these frogs. Frog sonas. Frog sonas. Yeah, um, drink frogs is so fun. I've seen some frogs lately. Saw a bunch of frogs on a hike last week out uh, uh, Griffith. That were pretty great. Oh yeah, because it's been raining yeah. so much. When I was on the Loud House, there was a, I pitched a storyboard, and I was so insecure. It was the first time in my career I had to pitch a board in front of like everybody and the executives in the room. Pitch. And for some reason, I was like. I was like pitching through it and I, I, I wasn't really like acting it out because I was just so mm -hmm. like scared. And I feel like when you pitch a board, you have to like do all the funny voices and all and like kind of do the timing correctly and all that. But I, I didn't have that experience at the time. And I was like crippled with anxiety and I didn't really feel super confident in my English. Like I could speak English, but I still had like a stronger accent. So I don't know. It's just like <laughs> really tough. Yeah, that's a whole other challenge. Yeah, it's just like I was like, oh gosh. Uh and then I was flipping through the boards and there's a moment when there's there was like a, a bucket that was flipping towards the camera. And in my head, coming from French productions, that's a really hard thing to animate. So I said, and here's here's the money, uh the money shot, everybody, the expensive money shot. And it's just a bucket flipping towards. And, you know, nobody reacted to it. Mm -hmm. And later, like, they pulled me into a room and they were like, V, why did you say it's an expensive shot? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oops. I think because the executives were in the room oh, and they were just, they it, because executives don't always understand how animation they don't works. Want, yeah. They don't want yeah. expensive shots. Yes. I think that's what it is. And, okay, yeah. I would probably edit that out. I Because it came from, like, a self-deprecating yeah. kind of, like, yeah. haha. You're trying to be sarcastic funny. about no, it. No, and that would have made... Yeah, that would have made it would have made sense as a joke to make in like a pitch if it was just to your yeah. like director to be funny. But like, yeah. but when you're in front of executives that are Who, like, like have no sense trying of to humor. get shots through yeah. and green light an episode or whatever. Yeah, and I was just like, I thought I was being funny, and it just made everybody's life more oh, difficult. That sucks. And I didn't. 
Yeah, so I would edit that out probably. <laughs> I've I've had a lot. I've 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 said a lot of things in pitches <laughs> that I wish that probably some of the more embarrassing things that I've said are just sort of like I go into a pitch meeting and I realize that the pitch that I have for them is not what they're looking for. And then I try to make up stuff oh, on the spot. Oh, that's the oh, worst. No. <laughs> like, like, and I just start listing stuff. Like I had this one pitch with Disney and I went in and I. Was it a board pitch or like an idea pitch? It was an idea pitch, okay. but then, and I initially had done it like, like I had like a, a small stack of ideas, but I ended up, I started pitching this idea and I was like, oh no this is really tone deaf they do not, not they do not this. think this is funny oh, no. they I, I, yeah i was pitching this idea to them about it was like a like a lost 90s cartoon where a, a girl gets sucked into the digital you know like the digiverse uh -huh. but it's a digiverse that is completely populated by by really cool digital skulls that are her friends and and i was just showing them all of these like playing cards that I had designed of cool digital skulls with like, like facts written about them. And it was just something it, it, like it's, it's much more of a, like, like adult swimmy yeah. idea. Like it was supposed <laughs> to be like, it was supposed to Disney. Disney. <laughs> and I was pitching this to Disney. <laughs> and, I, and, and, I, and then I started, and then I, I, but I, but I was, but I was acting as if I believed that the Digiverse existed <laughs> And that that Digi Skulls was a religion that I was following. That like if 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 you live your life through reason and and like you know like if if you're like if you're like a nerd, this is where your soul gets uploaded when you die. But bullies, they get uploaded oh, and they get I wish Disney was they, like they this. get turned into to mega spines and they're just soulless spines with a USB jack that tries to hijack. Uh, digi skulls like a virus and i and i was just going on about this stuff and like and, and the more i talked the more they were just like checking also i had Eyes another pitch over. like that i pitched i i i i went in with i went in with that same digi skulls pitch to a i i was i was trying to pitch it i was trying to pitch it as a card game uh but i i went into a toy company but but as they were taking me on a toy through the toy a tour through the toy company, it became it became very apparent that it was like seven and under toys. Mm. And oh. I was like, this is this is like Not for like audience. a Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering audience. This is going to be awful. Uh and I, I've just I've 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 um been on a lot of like general pitches yeah. where i quickly realized that nothing that i have prepared is like their style and then i just try to like i just i'm like frantically searching through my mind to find something relevant that sucks <laughs> i love that i love that i love that story that when you were <laughs> talking about first of all i love digi schools it's one of my favorite ideas of yours because oh. it's so out there <laughs> and I, I i hope one day we see it for real like it has to exist one day. And second of all, I love that we all laugh that you are pitching it to Disney because I feel like this is a very important thing to like mm -hmm. highlight mm -hmm. is that like when you pitch to studios, <laughs> studios have a very specific style. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah. it, it's hard to figure it, it out. Is, it took me a really yeah. long time to figure out like what is a Nickelodeon pitch? What is an Adult Swim pitch? What is a, you know, it, it takes a long time to figure out. And mm -hmm. it's only like an honest mistake to go to Disney with digit schools. <laughs> I think but at I the wish. time, I, I, I was aware that it was inappropriate, but I, I, I think I thought I was being funny by doing, just by yeah. doing it. And then I realized like, that I'm not on an episode of Jackass. I'm not on a prank TV show. I what you're gonna um... put yourself through by doing this, <laughs> like the emotional. Yeah, because I journey. guess I guess depending on the execs, I don't know the execs at um Disney, but I could. It could be a possibility that one exec could be thinking in their head, "This person is wasting my time." Oh, a hundred percent. A lot of the yeah. times, I feel like execs are pretty like 
sweet. I don't yeah, know. I feel uh, like I've been sure. lucky that execs are For pretty the sweet. Part. They're not trying to be. I've had execs yawn yeah. in my pitches before, but that's it. That's like the worst I've ever had. I feel like a yawn is okay. Yeah. Like, I think what I would feel really horrible about is if I was like berated or like, what do you think you're doing? Yeah. What are you yeah. Doing? Like, that's you're never wasting, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I, 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 there was one other editable moment that actually folds Alex into our, my conversation. Uh, basically there was, there was one time where I went to a union meeting mm -hmm. and I had gone because I needed to bring, I needed to uh, address a show that we, I, I believed was taking advantage of artists mm -hmm. and, okay, but it wasn't just a show. It was like a, 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 a it was a, it was a, a system thing. It was basically Cartoon Network had found a way mm -hmm. to have a whole crew of storyboard artists be completely freelance for the whole season so they could pay them a freelancer rate instead of the in-house rate but they were doing the same amount of work we were getting paid like a quarter that we were getting paid on a regular show yeah. a quarter yeah yeah i feel like it, it was it, it came out to like 800 like 800 a week yeah. barely but we were like we were like writing dialogue we were oh, recording yeah. it was like it, it was it, they were hard shows it was hard shows to work on and so imagine working for a studio for two years and then they're like hey we still like you but what if we paid you like yeah a quarter of what we were paying you for that whole time i think they tried to do what happens in uh europe which is like in europe now uh, most of the boards all of the board jobs are uh unit based so it's like oh we're mm -hmm. just going to pay you it was a flat rate for the flat episode, rate yeah. delivery of the episode but it is so much less money and yeah. a show like uh like the one you're talking about had a notoriously uh dif like it was a difficult style to it was, hit it was a difficult show it, it was a difficult mm -hmm. style to to start on because we were also writing dialogue but the the one of the only reasons why i had st started and agreed to that rate is because previously when i first started regular show there was a similar thing but like it was just it just lasted for one episode it was almost mm -hmm. like one i i had one test episode where i got paid a different rate and it was just to see how well I did on the show before they committed to me. And and I was like, oh, OK, like they're, you know, they're testing out to see if uh, how well I work on the show. But then I found out that every episode was going to be paid like that. Yeah. And what ended up happening is uh, Alex and I had and we were board partners on that show. And um, uh, I, I, I will get back to the the, the union meeting uh in a second but a alex would you like to tell some of your side of our our little our, our little nightmare oh yeah i guess the reason i got involved with that production was because like i was going back to tests you know like i took that test without knowing what that production was going to be that it was going to be a freelance thing that it was you know everyone was going to be separate mm -hmm. that it was only going to be paid what it was going to be paid uh and those tests take so long they are so involved so you and you're like trying to put your whole heart and soul into it they're like only spend like two hours on this and you're like yeah right like if you ever want to be considered for this <laughs> job you're gonna like put a ton of time into this so i did uh and yeah. then it's like oh i like the sponge on skull down here uh and so i did and mm -hmm. then i was like oh great cool i got accepted and then they're like oh we really like your test um, so the thing is, this show is blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I was a younger, more naive person. And I really, really liked the presentation for this show. Uh, and this is a note I would say to younger listeners, don't fall for it when people post cool stuff that is like getting attention. And then people try and hire you under like smaller rates with that. Like when people try and get talent under the guise of like look at this cool project like it's the tale is all this yeah. time like trying to get talent for experience or anything like that you know i fell for that for this production i guess yeah and and, and i want to i want to be clear i actually don't think it's as much of uh it like i don't fault the creative the, the creator or the director i think at the time there were multiple shows that were sort of being handled like this i don't necessarily fault them i in yeah, fact I, the i'm a big fan then... of, of of a lot of the people involved but but there was a producer 
who screamed yeah. at us. Oh, oh yeah, in the really? pitch meeting. Yes, that producer is nightmare, and I never want to work with that producer yeah. ever so, again. So they, I think they had, I think that they had since been fired. They have since been fired from that show. But, but we, we basically, our experience it was, still was a big deal over at WB. Our, 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 our experience, our experience was, we went onto the show. We, we did our first round of board pitch uh it had to be completely rewritten and reboarded every single time we pitched it uh because we were writing all the dialogue and boarding it and because of that our boards ended up being a little bit a little bit rougher and then when we pitched our slightly rough boards which should be okay on most shows mm -hmm. it was it was like a gaunt like we had we were running this gauntlet of like like we we had to rewrite all of it. And on top of that, we had uh, a revisions meeting where they went through for like literally three or four hours and and showed us how to like corrected all of our shoes. Like we were draw yeah. drawing the shoes wrong with red pen with red pencil. And so we tried again. We like or we were like, OK, we can do this. It's OK. And, and we and we came back. And for that show, I actually had written and recorded two songs. I, 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 in GarageBand, I recorded two songs. Oh yeah, we put in so much energy for the time. Yeah, I remember we met and like, we wrote that song together. We I mean, wrote I songs together. Yeah, no, we did. Yeah, we, we wrote the songs together. And and then we went in and for our pitch, like with songs, with board, you know, these boards, they were, they were a little bit rougher. And, and, and the producer stood up and he was and and he was like he was like this is what I'm scared of this is this is seeing stuff like this that is barely just thrown together yeah. you know this is going to be the reason why this show gets canceled or whatever whatever and and, and he, he stormed like, out a lot of work to do he was like basically like this has so much work to do before it's ready to be turned in or something like that but but he he screamed at us and I remember the two of us like leaving and we were both like. Like w that's not going to happen. We're not getting paid enough for that. And mm -hmm. what ended up happening is uh, I we I we did try a mediating process where because I have a, a manager, I got my manager on the line. We got a con a contact at Cartoon Network, and we were like, listen, like like it's not just us. There's like another crew that's about to quit too. Like unless something changes, uh, right now there's some people that are going to walk. And they decided not to even negotiate with us at all, and we wow. and we and we just left. But m my story about going to the union meeting that I would have Edit edited <laughs> was, was 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 basically the con the co the context is when I went on to that show, I was a a huge fan of the art director. Like like I like looked up to this art director, and I and I went to the union meeting, and I stood up and I talked about the the rates and the mistreatment of the show and 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 how long the revisions meetings were and i should also say this was a huge meeting i want to say like this meeting brought a yeah. lot of people <laughs> like there, it was like getting a lot of attention and, and like and and i and like, i i really like went off in front of all these people i like my you know my eyes were welling up with tears almost and and but but what i hadn't realized is the art director that I had really admired was sitting right behind me. Oh and, no! And and I, and I and I had gone off, and not only gone off about the show, but gone off about my experience. But you know, sort but of he working needed to hear with that. him it and the team. It wasn't like you'd said anything bad. No, about no, it. it's no, it it is it 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 is true. But it's it's one of those things where, like, if I had recognized that they were in the room. I, I probably would have talked more about the system. I probably would have talked about like it it at the end of the day, they're working under these constraints too. I, I, I probably would have reframed it a little bit, but I, I really went off. And then I, I sat down and then right after I talked, he stood up right behind me and he gave like this massive apology yeah. to the union and 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 I could tell he, he felt so bad. And 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 I had I've never talked to him since. And 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 he was like that dude, he was like one of my like storyboard heroes, yeah. and I was I was just like, fuck. I was like, man, that was really like, cool. I I, I I yeah, I just I I could have used it like just like maybe a little tweak, like a little. Nah. There's a there's a few little tweaks know, to, to I feel how like I what said you it. It was really strong, yeah, and I'm really proud of you for what you did. And I don't know Thank that you. I feel like they needed to hear what they did, what they heard, because yes, like they weren't necessarily like the ones 
perpetuating what happened they were still the leaders involved and like they i don't know no, they were yeah. like aware of what was happening and also like i think back to what was said in directly after uh this producer when he stormed out those two that were in charge said hey this is a really shitty situation but we're all just so proud of this project and we want it to succeed so well and i just want to be like hey don't you see what situation we're in like i wish they had had a little bit more empathy for us in that situation no no i know it's it's true it's true i also think it's crazy that like for me it's crazy that people expect storyboards to do more and more and more work like if you look we were just um like in one of the discords that i'm in people shared a board that rebecca sugar did for adventure time which is absolutely wonderful it's on paper it's on tiktok if you guys go on rebecca sugar's tiktok account you can see it it's um a song of uh marceline singing to bubblegum and it's amazing. It's just in paper. And then you see the animation on the bottom. And it's like, this is what storyboard, storyboard should be. But now we're doing all of this like writing and layout and all of the posings and all the contact poses and everything is crazy on model. And 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 that's the job. That's tr- They're trying to save money on this job. And it's like, this is such a labor intensive job. And it's kind of like, you got to pay for the quality that you want yeah. it's so much no, work exactly you know if you're gonna if you're gonna cheap out on it like what this you expect an you know intense I mean? job like... <laughs> and you know you gotta draw mm-hmm. the line somewhere you gotta make a stink you gotta like you gotta have some yeah. value in your, yourself yeah. and you have to say like this is what i'm willing to do for myself and i'm not well my two cents. i probably had one of my most dramatic show experiences in partnership with Alex. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I think I think looking looking back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was oh, a I, I, moment. Yeah, just look looking back. And 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 I think that I was I also had felt vulnerable because there was there was another show that Alex and I had worked on that I felt like I had failed at when I was there. Um and uh and it was a it was a, a difficult experience. And so I think that like I was coming off of difficult experiences and then going to another one and having like, like, you know, questioning myself, like, Mm. like, am I, am I do, (laughs) am I bad? Do I actually deserve what they're saying? Like, you know, like there's like a lot of questioning and uh, you know, and, and, and trying to find that balance. Like, but I, I do think that being on, a team with you and sharing such a similar experience helped to confirm a lot of the things I was feeling. And I probably would not have done the same thing if I wasn't on that project with you. I felt similar. It was nice. It probably would have turned different. I, I'm like, I'm sad that we had to go through that, but I'm glad we went through it together. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, me too. Trauma bond. It's yeah. not a, yeah. Trauma I don't bond. want yeah, yeah, yeah. Trauma <laughs> <bond>. <laughs> By blood. <laughs> but yeah i don't i I don't think i had told that story on the on the on the podcast before and uh but i i i it's a there's i guess it's just a good example of like yeah like even artists who like i mean even by that point i had been working for years in the animation industry and you still have experiences like that that either make you second guess or that like yeah it's like is it like me am I the one who's the problem what you're capable of yeah but no I'm the problem it's I me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's I mean it's always I I like to hear these stories just because like you said like Sean and Alex like both of you guys you have like really like you have had long careers you've had like successes prior and even even with prior successes you like it's easy to question yourself and be like what am I doing I, and like you know like question your your skills like I feel like this job is, is so hard sometimes because your ego is like kind of on the line all the time like everything feels so like even if you have your resume to kind of uh help you feel confident it 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 only goes so far right i don't know yeah. in these experiences mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Ego's. I don't know. I think it's like. A... Yeah, I, I do feel like we kind of fused into a, a Justice Voltron and and uh, <laughs> know, Justice Voltron got got out of there and 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 yeah, just sort of like a we were Zoids that did a few. You know, we did a Dragon Ball Z fusion dance and we were like, let's turn into someone who is strong enough to quit something <laughs> what are we talking you know? about because that's scary <laughs> that's scary oh no 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 uh from the show from the show we 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 because we quit together oh yes yes absolutely we voltroned out of there yeah no no no, no. I, yeah, I was just I, no, no no i was just saying we like fused yeah, into no, some we into, we were, you know we were like let's value. fuse into someone who can quit yeah, together i think we needed know? each other and it was like <laughs> i think we recognized like we were both in a bad place and we were like hey this isn't working right and you were like yeah this isn't working right and we were like together yeah. we could do something about this i think and also like yeah some other people yeah. who i won't maybe name names on here but like some other people helped us they left too yeah we all helped each other get out of there there's other people that left too and no it was it was it was good and the and the good thing is things on that show did they change. did change yeah i heard season uh, two was a and, lot and, better and I, I, season two was fun nice. yeah no i i heard i heard people on later seasons were they 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 were being treated yeah. well and they had switched the format of the show so that less the things depended yeah. on the board art there, there, there's just all sorts of things that they changed and who knows? Maybe that wouldn't have happened. Who knows? If you know the we weren't you, we weren't the the pebble in the avalanche. Yeah. You know, like the, the first the first like I kind mean, of if pebble it had changing. succeeded but, that way, like they probably would have kept doing things the way that it would have been. No, no. How did you how did you bounce back from an experience like that? What what, mm, what, did, what did you did you work on something that kind of reinvigorated your like? I mean, because you're still yeah. going. You know, like what what did you work on that did you work on anything since that sort of reestablished your faith and <laughs> like you know th th it's not all yeah. bad <laughs> animation industry not all bad uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i did some revision work for a little bit after that because i did want to take a little break from boards from doing like board driven stuff so i did do like some some uh non-writing work for a little bit <clears throat> but then i did kind of pick it back up into um summer camp island that's where i went after Ooh, nice. That was great. I love summer camp. Uh and I worked Ryan was on That's that for a, a little show. bit. I love Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely. There's a lot of like the adventure time crew was on there. I worked with Nick Edwards for a bit. It was really funny. Tom Herbig, yeah, great. Jesse Moynihan were on there. But yeah, I think it was Jesse Moynihan is such a talented. Oh my god, designer. his like Jesus <laughs> He's so is good so at drawing, nuts. dude. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know everybody go check out jesse moynihan <laughs> like he, he he was the he was the art director for the midnight gospel yeah. and so that's yeah. when i got to work with that? him but i was just me yeah, yeah you yeah 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 N me are you saying uh, me yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I i i actually i i started on that show at a um a, a really fortuitous point where um i was able to storyboard on half of the episodes that exist uh even though there were like four teams somehow i ended up being able to touch a lot a lot of it actually okay. um which um yeah i i think that was that was the show that reinvigorated like oh my god I would like love work environments can be awesome and creative and collaborative and know, right? you That's, can you yeah. can have enough time to do it uh -huh. and on top of that experimental stuff can be done and everybody's creative input can be valued um just yeah one of one of the best run shows that i've ever been on uh i think working on city of ghosts was what got me back excited about animation that was it's a while that after was great too but, um that was a great crew that How? i think that was kind of like i think i was kind of like being like what why does animation matter at that point? It was kind of like, we're yeah. all just kind of making this stuff and being miserable, like getting notes and like, it's not, all this stuff isn't funny. All this is just been, like, you know, all this like sad stuff we think about when we're burning out in animation. Uh, and then, hi, come here. Mm -hmm. Artie wants in, sorry. Oh, is that your kitty? Yeah, this is Artie. You might have seen him online. He's Artie. <gasps> Artie has, I know you like, guys can't ah. see this, but yeah no like people are only gonna see our drawings but we can okay, all edit draw that Artie out because he's <laughs> a cutie 
coffee and cream cat. <laughs> no, no, we don't have to. We don't have to edit it out. I'll, I'll draw. Okay. I'll draw. Oh, I'll draw you trying to keep a hold of Artie <laughs> as as they. <laughs> I like this. But um, <laughs> what you're what you're talking about is really true, Alex. About like, there's always this moment in your career. I feel like as an artist, especially as a storyboard artist, yeah. where you're like. Like, what am I doing? Totally. <laughs> like, Especially after doing it for 10 years. It's like so like, many. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, I'm spending so many hours out of my day. I'm doing sometimes over time because I love this show. Or sometimes I don't love the show, but I got to get it in. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. and then you're like, where's my life going? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like. <laughs> exactly. So. On City of Ghosts, were you uh, designing or boarding? I was boarding on that show. Mm, how was it boarding for it? Because it's like kind of yeah. Did you guys get the uh, audio first and then board to the audio, or like how did that work? Because it's a little bit, it's a it's it's a little bit documentary ish, exactly, right? Yeah. So it, it kind of depended. So sometimes we would just start doing like mood boards. We would just like we would have character designs, and so we'd just start like. It would be like, hey, this is kind of the like the director would be like, this is kind of the idea for this scene. Like, start doing like some, uh, like imagine being a documentary, like a documentarian in this scene. Like, what are some ideas for how, like, where you would put the camera? You know, just to start staging it for like when the photographer goes out and shoots stuff. And like, we may or may not use some of these scenes. You know, a lot of our stuff. We, we were drawing really loose because um, some of this stuff got used. A lot of it didn't get used. And then like the we're like kind of like drawing a lot of stuff that would be kind of interpreted as like raw footage, you know? And then uh, all of our boards kind of like got put into a folder that like the director would like pull from and like throw into the boards. It's very hard to describe, but it was a strange process. But I really liked it. Hmm. Um, and then later on, the director kind of like set it to the audio. Sometimes we were setting boards to audio too. And always like done like at the last second. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> we were like getting records, like kind of like whenever we could, you know. That's so funny. I feel like, uh, I've ne- yeah, I've never heard of a show ran that way. And it's kind of cool to hear all the different yeah. kind of ways that you can make a production. Totally. Happen. Yeah, it is nice. It sounds not that far away from how the Midnight Gospel was run because it was a podcast, totally. like yeah. pre-recorded audio that we were moving around and and editing a little bit. Yeah, they, it seems like a similar situation. Yeah, no, because because you both were like working from the audio. Like, would you say, Sean, that like for Midnight Gospel, you there was like a bunch of stuff that didn't get used because it got like kind of collaged later on, or? Yes, well, the 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 way that that sh- show functioned was strange because, like, we would have audio and we would cut up the audio and make pauses here and there, and even write on the boards like like they should say a thing here, uh, that's different from the audio to react to what's going on, or or else it just looks like they're in a different show <laughs> than mm-hmm. what is currently uh-huh. happening visually. Um, but, but it was, uh, it was strange because I would have, we would have like, okay, we have five minutes of audio and in the outline, it would say they are in the white house, just like playing (laughs) pool in a pool room. And at some point zombies need to break in and they run away. That's cool. But I have five minutes of audio. So, so basically I would pitch a whole bunch of gags. I would just like, uh, like, what are all the different ways that we could fill it up? Like at one point in, in the first episode, when they're, they're talking to the president there, there was a part that ended up getting cut out. I storyboarded a scene uh, to help fill up audio. And I think some of the audio ended up getting cut, but um, they, they walk over from the pool table and, um, and the president uh, takes a, a poop, What but like in a little bathroom and Clancy, is sitting outside the bathroom door handing him toilet paper as he's interviewing him and and then mm-hmm. you and and then you and then you uh but like half of it is like him trying to climb up this little stool onto the toilet and then um and then you pan and then we pan out and there the bathroom is like roped off and there's a bunch of reporters taking <laughs> pictures but you didn't realize that he's like pooping publicly and um but but I mean that that whole scene ended up getting getting cut. But but it, it's it, you're just like pitching 
ways that they can pass the time. The, I, there was another time in that episode where they're they're camping out in the woods, and in what ended up happening uh, eventually is like they're they're just like casually hanging out by the fire and having a fireside chat. But originally, while they were talking, I had the president um, almost like making a a cooking like a cooking show out of bugs, like he's like cooking them dinner. But out of like he's cracking a beetle over a centipede and like dusting, dusting that with like ants and then cooking that over the fire and like pretending he's like on a little cooking show with cooking them dinner out of bugs. And then while he was doing that, Clancy was making Home Alone style traps in case the zombies came. And Mm -hmm. then when the zombies come, all the traps get sprung as they're like running out and all these like logs are like piercing the zombies and they're falling into like tiger traps. But what, what we ended up doing was just saying like, Hey, like so far this episode has been crazy. Let's just have them like straight up just lying on their side, talking by the fire. And yeah, I mean, that makes sense, (laughs) but, but yeah, um, a lot, but it almost felt like storyboard driven, but without, uh, having to write dialogue much. That's really cool. taking some of the heavy lifting away. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that that's how like working on like some like Tom and Jerry mm-hmm. or something must have felt a little yeah. bit like you're just like like More pitching gags, a whole bunch of, of like funny gags. Yeah, yeah. nice. Ooh, I love this little arty drawing. So you've worked as a character designer. You've done layout. You've done storyboards, Alex, and you also do comics on the side. You you go to all these conventions when I do. You know, you got time. How? Yeah, how, what's your process like kind of yeah. coming up with um, like a book, for example? Well, I haven't made a book in a while. Right now I've been focusing more on animated shorts, mm-hmm. but the last thing I did was that that thing we sold at together. And I was doing more like prints at that, I guess. The last book was um, mm-hmm. the Garden Variety book did that like five I guess I haven't made comics in like five years if I'm being honest (laughs) but I do make (laughs) animated short gosh I'm so scattered with my creative process because I go back and forth to a lot of stuff but yeah right now I've been working with um, my friend Nola now is is that just because um you're drawn to new ways of storytelling or are you gravitating more towards different ways that you can pitch a thing or are are you just I don't know I think I just get bored with one thing I think I like I'll do a thing and just like nice do you do you all like Sean you're like very focused on animation you know I see you're like you turn Mm -hmm. them out do you do you make comics ever or do you jump around or are you like set in animation I I I I, sometimes I'm sometimes I make short comics when I like an idea but I don't like it enough to go through the whole process of animating it yeah. or or when i think that the like sometimes i'll make a comic when i'm trying to work out some like quirky little dialogue or when i think a joke will translate better in text than yeah. voice acted because i think that there's instances like there that especially if like right? there's like a narration like mm-hmm. like if there's like narration text that like I that maybe wouldn't read as funny with voiceover, but I've I've, I've kind of been combining them. Uh, I've had huh. I've had a lot of fun combining them actually recently. Talk to you about that. By basically, I'll make a comic, I'll make a comic, and then I'll render the panels and I'll time out the panels for TikTok and I'll do voiceover of all the lines as we switch in between panels and I'll I'll even like put in some little sound effects and stuff and it it turns like a something that takes me far less time than making a car like a, a an full... animated cartoon yeah. of it into something that's it's kind of like a storyboard a little bit but it, there's text on it that. uh that's... i've been having a lot of fun doing that actually it's like there is like a happy medium like something kind of sort of more like an animatic maybe something yeah mm-hmm. kind of closer to what they're looking for with the adults adult swim smalls you know that Mm -hmm. maybe i would like to start aiming for with because it just takes so much work to make a full-fledged animation you came out with a little short recently which was like like freaking amazing i was like like i was like how did he get the time to do all all this and it's really funny i had my my creative partner and i co-created that together so that's this two minds uh it's amazing that you can do that uh norlo carry 
Uh, we're, I, we're, I love working with a partner, yeah, like writing with a partner. Is this something that you enjoy? I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely helpful. I feel like it's, um, I get ideas and then I get off of ideas really quickly. I don't know if y'all are the same way, but that's how I, I don't know. I just don't commit. <laughs> like, so it's good to have it's, like a it's person hard to, to, stay... to keep you on something. Yeah. But, uh, I agree. It's hard to stay focused on something like because because that first phase of like like getting an idea is so much fun. You're like, ooh, and I could do all these things, and here's a fun uh -huh. joke, and this character could look like this, and then oh, what if like it happened in that area, and then they could just and then you like it's just like blue sky, yeah. and you're having so ooh. much fun, and then you actually have to do it, and it's like um, well, ooh. actually I'll just do something else, <laughs> and you don't know like what's good and what's not, you know. It's nice to have like another person to bounce ideas off of. One of the reasons why I gravitate towards like short stuff is because um like uh I I I go through that too where like I'll come up with an idea and then if I think about that idea for like a week I'm like okay I'm over that idea. Um so what I end up doing is I gravitate towards this like mode of like it's almost like my motivation takes me hostage and I have to make the thing in like two days I love that. like while i'm still excited about yeah. it uh and so i'll just do like a bender <laughs> like like an animation bender not drug induced except for caffeine <laughs> but like i'll I'll just like i'll just hyper fixate and i'll make a 30 second like meme ass like n not even worrying about like it being animated well yeah. but just like getting something done and getting that idea out before i know that i'm going to be tired of it and yeah. um yeah, so that's a little bit how I function. I really got to get to that Dude, that's place. that's exactly how I... I I'm, like, really... Yeah. I, I, like, am too picky with stuff right now, but I'm, like, learning... I'm in this, like, mode of, like, uh, loose drawing, and I'm, like, really trying to push that right now. So I'm really working to get to a place where I can make fast work. You know, that's the goal right now, because, like, my whole life... Wait, you're experimenting. You're playing in this yeah, space. Yeah, I, I, My whole life has just been, like, just, like, tight you know like very tight and like mm. tight drawings take it's just too long you know and i don't think they're always fun either so they like lack character a lot of I, the time so I, they, they're in that interesting space though like you, it's true that your work is very tight but it also has this kind of like i know how to describe it but like almost like an um like an out of this world feeling kind of like you know like that quality of the drawings being so tight kind of makes it almost like poetic in a way you. you know what i mean like it's because it's like so perfect <laughs> yeah 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 exactly I'm trying to like that's exactly the word get over that i'm excited to see the balance that you find in between yeah yeah i'm trying to like find something because i i, I think that as we go along and as we prioritize sort of like the independent thing like at, you know we, we work for a certain amount of time on other people's shows, other people's things. And then you start, you know, not everybody feels this way, but I think that both of you are, are, are share a, a quality where you want to make and express yourself on your own in, with your own work. And, and there's like a desire to do that, like, mm -hmm. like a need to do that. Um, not everybody has that and that's okay. There's different people that get into and I mean, there's different people that get into animation for different reasons. Some people's dream is to work on someone's, you know, a, a, a show, their favorite show and make the beautiful, most beautiful backgrounds ever. And they don't have a desire to make their own cartoon or whatever, or draw outside of work. And that's also OK. Totally. I think that's actually better for work life balance. Sometimes. <laughs> I, 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 I'm jealous of that sometimes, the people that are content. Yeah. yeah, but but I I think that um you both share that thing with me that mm -hmm. that outside of work you feel a, a desire to to make your own your own stuff and express yourself and explore and uh and as you go along uh and uh especially if you're not adding like a team to doing that if you're like working for years just making something alone I think that sometimes the the focus goes away from how can I make this really impressive mm -hmm. to like, how can I just like tell this thing, the story in a way that's fun for me yeah. to do. 
and sustainable. Because the impressive thing is um, boring after and, a while. I mean, some yeah. You do that impressive thing yeah. for like years, like trying to get attention, and it's just like, who cares? I don't know. Like it's not. <laughs> it's not for my. The it's not for my portfolio anymore. Yeah. It's just for fun. Yeah. It's for I me. I mean, I'm doing this all yeah. day just to like. It's basically like playing checkers or chess. Like I wake up just trying to like play. It's like playing solitaire maybe or something. You know, like I'm just having fun. It's like a self-satisfying mm. thing. I might as well just like yeah, make it a a perfect game for me, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's hard to separate other people's perceptions from that. I think that's a lot of the t- the reasons why people put a lot of pressure on their drawing skills, like the thing that you put out there. I yeah. mean, the, well, they they even like they they get um paralyzed. They feel paralyzed. Uh, about putting Stuff something out, out there, because yeah. they're worried that p- pe- people aren't going to like it or they're not going to get hired because they make a joke in this that's a little crass or yeah. like whatever and you start getting so hyper fixated on what other people think of your thing that you forget that like like for me the reason why i started all this is just i was making stick figure cartoons to make my buddy laugh and that's mm-hmm. it's like how i joke around that's how i tell jokes yeah. that's how i make people laugh and if I go, uh, if I fill my time with something that isn't true to that feeling, like lost then the I thread. start feeling disingenuous. Yeah. yeah, I've lost the thread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's really tough about having a career, like like being a creator. When I say creator, I, I mean as in like you love telling stories or like creating worlds or characters. Like, and then entering animation is like y- you can lose that thread really easily. Um, in page. the midst of work yeah let's do a new new page i you know we have a lot of really great questions from our listeners um are you down to yeah, answer of some questions alex anytime um so our patron money bean uh had a lot of questions for you and i think they're all really uh great let's get into it. there's the first one i'm gonna ask you is like a, one of the shortest one is there one genre that you gel more with in terms, I guess, of like storytelling that I and or style that I work with professionally or that, that, you, that you gel more you with gel, like you... That, that you like more? Like, are you more like, I guess, like of a comedy yeah. person or like, but I guess do you like drama for this question, does that mean professionally or does that mean that I watch? You know what? You can answer both. You can tell us what you watch. Uh, what do you like to like. intake and what do you like yeah. to outtake? Yeah yes I'll take i guess i like to take. work on what, yeah. i like to work on comedy mostly i have worked mostly on children's comedy but i don't necessarily feel um spiritually connected to children's comedy i feel like i'm mostly maybe since i started on regular show that's kind of where i feel mostly drawn is like that age range i don't necessarily mm-hmm. like that um like right before Adult Swim starts. Like that's like the comedy age range that I feel mostly drawn to. Yeah. I don't feel like um like a like a late night adult swimmer, like like the super mm. adult jokes, but I really don't feel like super edgy adult. Yeah, yeah. That's not me necessarily, but I don't necessarily feel like a preschool comedy guy. Like I am somewhere in between. I have a, I have a hard time with like that cutoff that like this is what has to be adult um because and i've gotten this note before i i've 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 like pitched things that like are full of like it's like people exploding and gore and cursing and like all this whatever and and then they'd say like but is this an adult show and i and i'm like well i mean there's like a bunch of gore and there's cursing and like like sex jokes and stuff and they're like like we're gonna need to see them like like maybe put them in the workplace like put them in adult situations yeah people get so maybe 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 have them tell some more like adult specific jokes And, and 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 um and i don't i feel like that thing that defines what an what adult humor is is changing and should change and i feel like we've been adult comedy has been put in this box for a long time and, and i i i hope that we're switching out yeah. of it a little bit but i i do see like you know that there's this box of shows that are like insert 
adult joke here. Ha ha ha. You know, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a edgy, I'm an edgy aunt back when yeah, I hooked up yeah, with Santa yeah. Claus. He gave me crabs, totally, you know, yeah. like, I don't know. Well, like, I guess that's, whatever. I guess I love <laughs> the show is <laughs> everybody's like, this is adult shows. Now. I think I, I think <laughs> like, we're kind of saying the same thing, Sean. I, you know, I think yeah. I'm reacting to <laughs> the exact notes. Exactly. Like, I don't like to, um, I don't like to feel put into the boxes very much. Um, but for those exact reasons, like, I don't like to feel like I have to tailor my jokes to a certain degree. I really liked working at Cartoon Network because it felt like we had a lot of range to just kind of write whatever jokes we wanted to, you know, like on summer camp, on regular show, uh, on some of the other shows we worked on, it felt like we were just kind of writing comedy and like, it wasn't like we we're writing age specific comedy, you know? Mm hmm so, so like I miss the age of like those network kids for driven shows I guess you were asking if the question was about what you oh what I also watch or take in yeah 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 yeah, yeah now I want to <laughs> I want to hear what's your favorite uh things you watch yeah. oh comedy for sure or, read, um, or more like yeah comedy watching mostly the HBO stuff I would say did you watch much cartoons much on your own or is it mostly live action stuff I'm trying to make more of an effort to watch cartoons these days uh, because for a while I was that like basic person who worked in animation who didn't watch cartoons. This is a great, these skating people are wonderful, by the way. <laughs> the, this Thank week you. I've been watching Ed, Ed and Eddie. As inspired by you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> is that my skater gif? It is your, scare, your skater Thank person. You. <laughs> uh, this week I've been watching Ed, Ed and Eddie. Have y'all watched that recently? Dude, yeah. It's, it's been a long time. It's, it's actually what I used as a comp for my Cartoon Network short. I pitched it as Ed, Ed and Eddie for girls. Oh, awesome. For some reason, that pitch really lands. Because yeah, it's sick, and, and it feels like it's kind of been slept on for a bit. Uh, I saw someone tweet it, like, it, oh, yeah. like, the Ed, Ed and Eddie Bible like two, a week or two ago. I have not seen uh, it. Well, I'll send it to you Did, if you want you... it, because um, that's what got me on this kick. Um, and it's like, yeah, really, like, it's like, dumb but like poetically dumb you know what i mean like uh the mm. pitch the elevator pitch is like they're friends because they have the same name i think that's the pitch and then like the second pitch is like that's puberty so is, is unforgiving or something like that uh and like the whole thing just looks like the bible looks like a zine or something it like looks really cool like it looks like a show oh, i want to pick yeah. up that's so sick yeah it's it's just beautiful like all the text they use and it, is, like, it was awesome yeah I was also watching it because, well, first of all, because it's my comp, but also because I, I, I've, I've been so nostalgic of these old shows where the backgrounds are easy. They're yeah. not. There's not a million details. Like the backgrounds look like actual cartoon backgrounds. It's not like it doesn't look like an illustration, like a complex yeah. illustrated children's book. And I'm like, I love that. And I also love that the, um like the, the scripts or like scenario like the ideas what happens in the episodes is just very simple and it's not a huge emotional arc it's just fun like just kids been dumb totally i also <laughs> yeah. like how cartoony yeah. it is in like this time when a lot of shows are like kind of act like serious and like yes i that yeah that's my biggest thing it's kind of um, like right now there's so many shows they're so tight that it, it all feels like the simpsons yeah. but for kids and it's like so tight I, I'm uh, I'm really interested in pitch Bibles that are um, they're made to be less like the perfect pitch and made to be more a fun thing to read. Yeah. And I think that the Ed, Ed and Eddie Bible is like that. I also think that the Adventure Time Bible is like that. Yes. It's it's uh, like fun drawings of characters with cute things that they would say. And like uh, like it's not there's not like the like this is you know labeled this is the world this is the story this is the theme this is the tone this is uh character one through three yeah, yeah, and yeah. their the emotional ties to one another well, like it's just like, like they don't like they, it, yeah sorry it, finish um, what you're saying i keep interrupting you no, no 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 please please what, what are we gonna say i feel like some of that stuff they don't like because they like figuring mm -hmm. that stuff out with you right some of that i mean they like you yeah. they like seeing yeah, it like yeah I, I, I think out, i think like, it's a good idea but like they want to hear fun, funny stuff. And then like the clinical stuff you figure out with them, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. I also 
I also believe I, that's my biggest realization. I'm telling everybody this, but it's like a show like Ed and Eddie or Dexter's Lab or uh, Recess or um, Doug. It's like all shows that is happening in the real world. And it's so much easier to pitch that to an exact because there's no world building or the world building is just so minor and so much easier to just get in right into the characters because yeah. at the end of the day you just kind of want to spend time with your characters and if you don't really understand where the characters live it is kind of like like then you start like the you the person you're pitching to get starts being sidetracked it's like well what about this what does this mean yeah it's nice that you just have that built in or you don't have to like explain much stuff you know yeah it's like everybody knows what a house is and what a school well, is it's like <laughs> to be a 13 year old boy who's like who just wants to get yeah. job breakers <laughs> still from money bean in the shows that you designed bgs or supporting characters for such as bojack how many of these characters are given personalities beforehand for you to base their design off of versus needing just anybody and having fun with it hmm um, where does your hand take you when you just have fun with the BG or a smaller character? Yeah. It's a two-parter. So for Bojack, it was a little different because Bojack, um, Lisa Hannawalt was the art director, and so that had a very specific art style. Um, so she was doing a lot of the pre-designs for us, um, and then we were kind of cleaning up from there so yes I was um uh, I was still designing some of the characters and I was doing like turns and like the proper design styles but for a lot of those characters we were kind of given like pre pre-designed characters already so I wasn't making a ton of creative decisions for the for that show uh, but mm. for let's say like yeah when you're working like on a show when you're a character designer Oftentimes you get you get like a lot of these, like you have an art director a lot of the time. So you get like designs from them or like from the from the board. So you have like a pretty good idea of where to, to go from, you know. And you have like the style from the show. So you don't get too much freedom to kind of go off script unless it's like a background character. Then you're kind of like coming up with things out of your head that I feel like the time when you get to kind of play the most with design is like at the very beginning like when things haven't really been established like um this last production I was just on it's like a brand new thing so we're all kind of like on the ground floor figuring stuff out so I was given like a pdf of like all the character descriptions um and that, that came from the writers uh, and so I'm doing like a lot of sketches uh like one of the, you know it's like this character is a goth character so I'm googling like goth and it's like first draft goth character and they're like oh it's kind of a boring goth character it's like go a little deeper than that so it's like you know you're just like digging from your psych of like you know I don't have to explain how that works but um <laughs> <laughs> how like brainstorming works um yeah uh it's just like you know back and forth of that and i'm trying to think yeah, how to give a better example of you, when you when you want to push deeper on a character do you like google stuff do you use yeah, uh, image references or are you mm. for sure yeah google image you just google like deeper goth <laughs> <laughs> goth inception <laughs> I, I i need i need to find uh there's several layers of goth there's yeah. deeper goth <laughs> Uh, there's surface level to goth. Go, to go to Weaver, though, you're saying they, I feel like sometimes when you when I because I, I I love designing like goth emo yeah. kind of like scene kids. It's my oh, favorite. So uh, but and so yeah, because like because the, because they're already a design like an, in real life uh -huh. design, right? And when when you know like the, like more specific fashion words like cyber goth oh, or yeah, shit like yeah. that then you can kind of like totally yeah. right you can get like yeah. the good stuff yeah you right? can't just have like off the yeah. shelf goth you have to go a little <laughs> you know you know a cool one uh that, oh, Sean knows uh, all the goth. i've been noticing is the, so so the i think that uh health goth <laughs> is very interesting health oh, goth is wait really is, is, it's 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 a lot of drop crotch a comfortable stretchy 
pants and very flowy like, garments uh, and a lot of athletic a wear, lot of athletic of pro- wear. I feel like it's intersectionality oh. with athleisure wear. But it's all black. But it, but but they wear all black. Um, and the makeup. And then a, a, another one is um, it, this one is a little bit less referenced, a little bit more nuanced. But uh, Arctic Goth Whoa. is Arctic all white, goth. but still with the goth aesthetic. So you have like a um, desert goth. A switch from like like switch from the Matrix. Uh, always wore white and sort of had like it's all. It's almost like if goth went albino or something like huh. that. Like like sort of it's, like it's, it's the like- same. Final Fantasy. Kind of it's like it feels like day. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but it, but it's inter- It's I, I I like these like sub genres of goth that are, is like goth adjacent. But yes. and, and, and you can still you can still tell it's the same like dark angstiness. But like but with like you know this person wants to go to the gym <laughs> yes. or like or like this person this person uh yeah I, I yeah this person is on hoth like that star wars uh like uh snow world you know yeah. they're figuring out their own That's journey so cool i love it <laughs> i worked on a i worked on a an ed and eddie parody that's my mo my most recent experience with ed and eddie, ed, ed and eddie was wasn't watching it it was working on um is a uh uh online animator named meat canyon that i edit oh, I've heard that of i meat animated canyon some shots of uh it uh, basically the 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 plot is that they're trying to get jawbreakers but they're but it's like a horror version where they're finding they're taking everyone's jaws and they're making a big ball of jaws and viscera and then they like put that in there it's 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 super weird but uh i i animated a little bit on that so that's my more my more recent um ed and eddie (laughs) thing (laughs) Um, I I actually like this question also from Money Bean because um, it's about your style, yeah, Alex. Let's hear it. What influence? Yeah, what influenced this blocky, somewhat disproportionate, <laughs> wrinkly human style of yours? <laughs> My wrinkly style. Was this? Uh, uh, <laughs> what always read it in your personal style whenever you originally took art seriously? Mm, uh, who is? influenced my style let's see i got really into robert uh, what's his name robert ryan corey it was huge for me back in the day did y'all ever look at him oh yeah yeah he was huge for my uh influence he has an amazing lecture that you can find online oh, really? if anybody's listening if you if you type in robert ryan corey uh design lecture it's i think it is on facebook i don't know anything about it's him. really good is he it, a decent person I have no idea. I've never worked with him. I I only know him through the lecture. Okay. Um, well, his drawings are which, gorgeous. Which I think it's really good. And I, yeah, changed my whole perspective whenever I was in college. Um, yeah. And then I feel like Ghost Shrimp was a big one for me when I was watching Adventure Time. That was when I was like, maybe I want to be a background artist. Um, that shit was awesome because it was like very illustrative, and it, he he was like putting art into animation in a like a really interesting way that I was like not seeing in other animation at the time who else I was on boom all the time that art website oh yeah, yeah. they're still around they're, they're still, still around. around yeah I yeah. still get on that, that site every now and yeah. then that was where I first found out about Helen's work I was like huge oh, in yeah? Helen's work and then I met her out here and now we're like friends that is so cool I love that yeah, yeah I'm subscribed to their um email list yeah. by the way if you're listening to uh, this podcast right now, I would definitely recommend to go. It's Boom with it's like seven, five or seven, seven O's, O's, nine yeah. O's, seven. I, that was like yeah. my dream to be on Boom's <laughs> front page one day. But, yeah. Uh, and who who's Helen? Just in case, if if we're gonna oh, yeah. if we're gonna Helen talk jo. about an artist, I'd like Helen. to just make sure that people can. Yeah, Helen Joe is Helen jo. an incredible I- illustrator artist who works out here in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, she used to work in animation uh, on steven universe i believe and regular show at one point and yeah we're all i think the three of us are all three of us are friends with her yeah she's just awesome i i, I think that helen helen was one of the reasons why I, I think the main reason why i got on the regular show yeah oh i think it was a, i think it was a helen joe wreck because i i worked on stone quackers oh yeah i was stone quackers that show looks cool 
it was it was cool it was my first storyboarding really? job. i love the art style of that show yeah the, the, the funny thing the funny mind gaming thing on that show was that the creator ben jones used to have me storyboard at least one fake scene in certain episodes so, to give the executives something to cut and we would make it bad on per like like worse on purpose or <laughs> or not have a point so that because the executives always liked to cut one thing. Oh, okay. Uh, at <laughs> least Got it. that's kind of smart. And so we would we would make a a de we would make a decoy scene oh. for them to cut to feel like they did their job. Did that always work? And so I would I wait, but it, it I mean it worked when we did it, which was very interesting. Um, Maybe that's a lesson because it I I mean it it is weird to spend three hours storyboarding a scene that you know is going to get cut on <laughs> like that that is like a weird but does that thing. maybe save yourself like a like a meeting later on though mm -hmm. I, I mean it is possible but that 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 was my first um that always happens you know? into it's like a trade the, the, with the, the politics of getting the episode through like the that it's more complicated than just it being good sometimes yeah. sometimes you have to placate yep. the the different executives or the different producers or whatever and uh and so yeah that that was my first time uh and the interesting thing about um stone quackers is uh it it, it started off as like a sketch comedy thing where there would be a bunch of short little episodes and skits and we were going to edit it, them together and have like little short little bumpers in between them um, but then it turned into regular episodes. And so on the first season of Stone Quackers, I had a, a, a bunch of storyboard partners. And then on the second season of Stone Quackers, I storyboarded it completely alone, all of it. Whoa. I was the only storyboard artist on the second Solo season. Storyboards are tough. Um, oh. Storyboarding is hard, yeah, man. Yeah, storyboarding. Yeah, and that, yeah it was my first. It was my it. first storyboarding job, but I was like, "Why are you? Why are you trusting me like this?" Yeah. But there, there was like a series of shows that Fox ADHD had done, which was it was the my my first job, where they basically took all of the members of the shorts team, the team that made a, a short every single week for the YouTube, and they were like, "What if we made shows that felt like shorts?" And and so there was two shows that I had started on for my first shows that I had ever been on that the, the, the intention was to make them feel sort of like an Internet mm. short. And so they all of the like the most of the main people on on the show were like people that made Internet. I wonder shorts. if that would have hit if that would have hit a little differently today. Fox ADHD. Hmm. Oh, you it think that TikTok might have. and stuff? You think it's just yeah. like it was ahead of its time maybe mm. i mean yeah. it's it's pot it's, po it's possible like i mean i think that well and stuff but like right isn't that well, right i don't know yeah well i mean you, you you have you have these shows right now that are coming from artists from the internet animation space you have like smiling yeah. friends you have koala man you have uh, uh yolo crystal fantasy which are these mm -hmm. uh shows that are that are made by uh, artists that started off on like new grounds and stuff and i think it's finally coming around to like like hey you guys have this like internet sensibility and that's what yeah i mean the kid kids are just watching shorts and internet shorts like what if we make shows feel like yeah. that I, I think that is something that's, that's happening interesting to think about more now yeah there's yeah. all these companies like like we were talking about the studio and uh, adult swim smalls kind of doing what adhd wanted to do i guess yeah, yeah. Because yeah, ADHD was around even before, like it was after Vine, but before TikTok. Yeah. So it was, I just mm -hmm. missed this. Yeah, thing. No, yeah. Super Deluxe too. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, but but they Super Deluxe. Yeah, I feel like Super Deluxe and Fox ADHD were kind of in the same space, like doing doing uh some some similar kind of stuff. I Fox ADHD introduced me to the the first um the concept that of someone being able to make a living making nothing but gifts that's really cool they, they they had they had a gift department where they had eight people who were full-time making gifts they would make two gifts a day Holy and crap. they would uh they would just take 
new they would take news articles they would take uh things happening in pop culture and make gifs of them and uh this was back when like tumblr was at i think it's peak and so they were really like like pumping out gifs on tumblr and that, that was the uh i i did a few freelance gifs for them and that was the first time that i had anything ever go viral i i made some viral gifs on their on their t- uh tumblr Dude, I thought that you, um, when Alex pulled up the Elmo with fire gif, I thought that as you were talking, Sean, I thought you made that. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just doing gifs. No, I wish. I wish. <laughs> that was so, like, yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, oh. Here, 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 here. I, I was, I, I was gonna, I'm, I'm adding, uh, I'm adding the, the gifs that I made for, um, uh that went viral oh, nice. the, the the i made uh i made two two nice. gifts that like <laughs> took off and, uh, and, and, and went crazy <laughs> when i was at fox ADHD. For people are saying so, on... like it, the animation is so violent <laughs> the way it's like yeah it's yes no it's true if you're listening on spotify this... check oh, out I've the youtube one, yeah. video because it's a, a gif of a a boss in like a cubicle type environment who's telling a lady hey and she's like what and he's like get back to twerk and then you see her twerking <laughs> and then and and then this other one is uh Ooh. basketball sunglasses yeah. uh the guy puts his glasses down like excuse me and then two little balls go through Good their hand boots. animation and this one this one of <laughs> this one actually is as an easter egg is in the uh, that big QAnon documentary that came out i think on hbo max really wait it, 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 which so, one some they they show they actually it's actually it's very unfortunate but it, it's an example of how how gifts and memes can get out of control basically this gif was posted as a reaction to um like a, a mass shooting, oh, like no. on a forum on oh, on no. the Q on the on the on the QAnon board, and it, but it just shows up in the documentary, and everyone was tagging me. Wait, uh, which when which it, one? When it came out, uh, it is the one with the basketball sunglasses. So someone someone was like, really? "Excuse, yeah, like <laughs> excuse me," and that's how people use it, oh, I guess. But um, that's crazy. Th- these these were my my first viral things. It was it was gifts yeah. with ADHD. That's amazing. So I wish that could be my full job. Yeah, making some little gifts, like fun, like crazy little gifts. <laughs> Working for Giphy. I guess Giphy does that, right? Dude, that that was actually maybe like like working, doing freelance for Giphy. I remember that was like, it was unreal to me that someone could make a living just making gifts. And I remember I did, I, I used to like, I, I was like, please give me more Giphy freelance. Please give me more <laughs> Giphy freelance. Because cause originally. <laughs> I know, and it's like a. A shooting star, right? Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. Comes whenever it happens, like, right? like I, they, they would say like, "Hey, make this gif, make this like gif," and it technically it could be like three frames. A gif doesn't have to be long, but it would just be m- make a gif, and and for every gif you made, it was like five hundred dollars. And I was oh like, "Whoa!" God. Like, if, like, what if I, what if, what if I made, I could make two gifs a day and make like a. A week's worth of pay yeah. at that time. Yeah, you your know? brain like, starts thinking, "Holy shit!" Like you know, <laughs> this is my yeah. life forever. And if I make a, and if I make twenty gifts a week, <laughs> I could be a millionaire <laughs> by the time I'm thirty. You know, like, <laughs> uh, I'll make I'll make thirty gifts a week, and I'll put in my four hundred one k, and and then I can so vacation good. in Bermuda by the time I'm forty five. <laughs> Ice cream's so good. <laughs> yeah. I love I love that like career. Career math. Yeah, yeah. Career math. I do that all the time. The I, second I see a hustle, giving... I'm like, "This is it. I'm setting my life up. This is my way." <laughs> this. <laughs> Anytime I see, we're money. still doing it, and we're in our thirties. Well, this is how we've been told to Aww. live. Like this is how animation has like, yeah, just corrupted us. I guess you know. Well, yeah. well, it's, well, it's all like, <laughs> like, hey, like, spend all your time focusing on making something go viral. Because that that for sure will be your key to success. And then once it actually happens, you realize that there wasn't a way to make money off of that viral thing. You just have a thing that's viral and most people don't even know that you did it because it gets unattached from your right. name. And people are just reposting the GIF with like little Yachty lyrics yeah, yeah, that's no it and like a to song. Doing that and... Forever and ever. I mean, I guess some people have like figured it out, but I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like, okay. 
I, this is me being crazy and just going ad lib here but like if you if you if before releasing your gift you're like being like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna prep my shop have a print of the gift or something like the most the image that's the most uh iconic from the gift and then if it goes viral you might be able to make a little bit of money from it because you have merch ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's like, you have to like, you're doing like 3D chess with your potentially, maybe. Yeah, you be your own marketing person. Um, yeah. Your marketing PR yeah. team. It reminds, it reminds me of um like one, uh, there was, there's this one gift that I made of uh, Santa Claus and he had a candy cane for a penis and he's <laughs> swinging it around. And uh, and I didn't realize that someone had taken it and made it go viral on their website or whatever. Like, like videos of it were getting passed around and had millions yeah. of views. And mine didn't. <laughs> mine That's didn't. Crazy. But, 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 but they, but they would write like, you know, when Bay comes home for Christmas, and there, there would be like, I'm in love with the Coco or something like music edited on top of it as a meme. And I, I remember like. Like stumbling across that post and being like, "Oh my, the internet is fucking crazy!" Yeah. Like, like no one has any clue I did this. It's <laughs> like, so but insane. it's just, I don't know, man. I feel like that happened <laughs> to you so much, Sean. You have like a lot of stuff that goes like viral, but like for some reason, it doesn't get like linked back to your. That's so crazy. Huh, I mean, I there's just, there's just a certain way that the internet yeah. works, and 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 also sometimes I make this stuff for other companies and then it goes viral on that company's thing and yeah i mean it's uh most of the time there's not like a signature on the on on the thing on the gif or whatever yeah. or if there is they crop it out <laughs> you also have all of your stuff I, I i i need to get better at doing it because like a I, watermark? Know, yeah. I need to watermark all of my panels because i do realize sometimes like i mean my i got lucky that my comic hasn't really gone like crazy viral outside of my page like I have a strip that went viral but it went viral within Instagram I don't think it was reposted elsewhere however when I did do this like Cartoon Network Shippuden fan art where it was just like all of the Cartoon Network characters dressed as like Naruto characters oh that's that goes gonna, viral like every <laughs> yeah exactly i was just like doing it for fun i was like whatever and like that goes viral every like three years but people don't really know it's me like i mean sometimes i get tagged in it but yeah i don't really get any following from that dude the internet is nuts man and i I, i've sort of just like i i sort of view it as like ash when every time ash lets go of his one of his pokemon and sets him free yeah. At, at first, you're, <laughs> at first, when you're watching Pokemon, you're like, "What the fuck? That was your yeah. coolest Pokemon!" Uh, but like, eventually, you're it's like, like "Sand Bondolas. You know, you just set you, you set your art free, and it lives a life of its own somewhere. And that's that's why memes are mm-hmm. magic. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> they have power behind them. I talking about power, uh, and I can kind of link that to like motivation. Alex, I have a question for yeah. you from YouTube from at Sean Brennan 8910. I think it's a really cool question. Um, Sean asks, I recently came off boarding for a very exciting show. Now I'm boarding for a preschool show and struggling with motivation. Have you ever had this? Can you trick yourself into being excited about something you're not interested in? Mm, having to pay the bills, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but is that enough motivation no. for you to like stay excited? No, it's and, not. Like, you know, uh, yeah. That's yeah. a tough question, but we have all, we've all been there. Yeah. Oh gosh, this is a bad answer, but maybe like thinking of it as like a new challenge, you know, maybe that's a bad answer. Have you ever been in that position of being in Truly, a, yeah. In, on a show where you struggled? Yeah. yeah. And what, how did you get through that? Did you manage to get through that? I ended up quitting. Slump? <laughs> it wasn't I, I like don't have a good answer for this like I, I try to not put myself in jobs but I'm like not six like that I'm not flourishing but it, that's hard in animation you no know? because like there's only so many jobs especially right now you know it's a very peculiar yeah what's the, what's the question again when you you had like a really great experience and and that happened to me when I was like I, I was on Thundercats and it was kind of like the most fun I've ever had working on a show and I knew in my head as like nothing is going to compare to this job yeah. ever again and i was right and then yeah. every other job i got after thundercats was 
like pulling teeth because it's like, well, I'm not as creative. I can't do as many things. I guess there are so many rules I have to follow and it's hard to find. Yeah. Where you can find the fun. I think what I have thought, I mean, this is maybe not like fun per se, but like two things I can think of is like focus on like the community you have there instead of like the, the, um, the, the product, you know, cause like, obviously you're not interested in the product. So stop thinking about the product and think about like, the people mm. you're working with instead, you know, think about what you can learn from those mm. people, you know, because every crew has is like full of talents. You know, our industry is chock full of talents yes. uh, and you have something to glean from those people. And the other thing I would think of is just like, I think of every production kind of like, like a classroom because I'm a forever learner and I just, I love, I love learning. So I would just kind of think of that production as a, maybe like a, crappy elective that you're taking in college you know like it's like preschool 101 or something like just kind of think of it like what what skills could you learn in this that like maybe you could apply to a production later on that think about skills that you would learn at this show that you wouldn't learn from another production later on you know because I've definitely learned from preschool shows that I don't typically work on uh, I've learned from those skills like how to be a more you know preschool shows are definitely like more uh, well-oiled machines that like there's lots of rules on them things have to be like very particular I wasn't always like that on board driven shows it's much more about the writing it's about like mm. focusing on like being funny and like making the room laugh but I did become a much more like diligent I became much more diligent about my files and about that stuff when I started working on that stuff but that's just one example of many things I learned yeah. on those productions I guess shows shows that you're not Shows that you're not into, it's like a blessing and a curse because shows that you're into, sometimes you can go extra hard on because you care about it and yes. you end up giving all of your time to this production that it's still not technically like your own mm -hmm. creation. And yep. so you're, you're giving your all to this thing because you love it and you care about it. But sometimes it's nice to work on something that you don't care that much about because you know that your medium best work is still good enough and you can focus on things outside of that job. Get, you know, get your work done. Don't get emotionally attached to it. Feel good about clocking out at the end of the day. And then take, and those are the shows that where I end up getting more of my own stuff done outside of work, because not only is the show not taking up my creative energy, but also like I am able to not not phone it in, but control how much effort I'm putting into it because at the end of the day, it doesn't have to look crazy beautiful. It just has to work. You can hang your hat at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You don't take homework home with you as much. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a show like The Midnight Gospel, I'm working on that outside of work. I'm show. trying yeah. to come up with songs. I'm trying to like, I'm, I'm trying to come up with songs on my own time. I'm like coming up with, Draw, funny drawings to try to make Pendleton Ward laugh. I'm like, I'm like, because it almost like, yeah. it almost fuses into your personal work, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I almost get more me work done during times on shows where it's just a job. Yeah. Where it's just a job. That's you know? a really good answer. That was, that was a better, that was better put than I came up with. Good job. Well, I was able to build ah! off of yeah, what you said. I, like I, I jumped off Love of it. what you said. You know, with teamwork, <laughs> teamwork, <laughs> teamwork. <laughs> no, I think that's. A, I think it's a really great question, and I think that's oh, some like you said. Like it's good to hear also that everybody's going through it. Like the three of us went through it. They're like our listener is going through that, and I think it's a very common feeling. And it's good to like kind of uh, brainstorm around it and be like, you know, this happens and it's okay yeah. and totally you know there are ways you're you know. just there's just not enough great shows <laughs> there's just not enough like dream projects out there you know Some, sometimes you need those sometimes you need those shows that you're not into to make the shows that you totally. are into shine exactly. you need that you, know, yes. you need that rain around the sunshine dude <laughs> you can't you can't give your all to every project you know yeah <laughs> yeah and i also yeah and i think you know like like you guys were saying, it's like a good way to like learn skills without being uh, crushed. But because I feel like sometimes when you're on a show that you're really excited about, you like kind of put a lot of pressure on yourself. And it's better to start on shows where there's like 
a lot less pressure because then you can just focus on like learning skills and talking about skills from at Jake in a flannel, Jake in a flannel. from YouTube. Are there any Jake in a flannel? That's a nice, that's a good username. name. <laughs> Are there any habits you learned as a storyboarder that you encourage others to begin uh, taking on? I guess time management. Yeah, like definitely. So how can you be like Mars? specific for like time management how you go yeah, about it biting your anxiety <laughs> i don't know um skills <laughs> you mean like draw <laughs> well, what's a t- what's a time management before you branch to other ones what's a time management hack that you have hack, learned hack. somewhere that ha- has helped you yeah yeah drawing really small in storyboard pro has helped me a lot yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> Drawing with the, the thing, I agree. like really the, the what's it called? The canvas. Katie Mitroff, my director on, mm-hmm. shout out to Katie Mitroff, you rock. You taught me a lot on Frog and Toad. Uh, you taught me how to do that and that rules. Um, yeah, do that on your thumbnails. And also like do that for most of it, I feel like. I used to draw really mm-hmm. close up. Character designing really small is good. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, I used to do, like, um, you know, I, I started design before I did boards and that kind of, like, I want to do all my lines really clean, you know? That's the thing. I feel like that's, like, an Achilles mm-hmm. heel for a lot of artists when they get into the board game. It's, like, wanting their boards to look beautiful and, you know, you got to rewire that whole mm-hmm. thing. You got to have expressive, quick boards that you can throw out at a whim if the if everything's wrong. So yeah, time management, yeah. drawing really small thumbs is a, has been huge for me. And like just getting to it as quick as possible has been huge for me. And like just being like uh, this like dumb drawing is like what they're going to get because like I did it today. Like this is like what I budgeted for myself. And like I, I, I at least did the work today, you know, is like what I told myself I was going to do and I did it. So like honoring and valuing the work I did today like counts for something. Mm-hmm. if that, i don't know if that makes sense but uh it's like that's that means oh, it does. It's something like... more than like procrastinating on like not doing something you know what i mean like i would rather do a small dumb drawing 10 bad dumb drawings than like not doing anything because i'm scared to sit down at the cintiq and like like grind away at like yeah a bunch of really pretty drawings if that makes sense i don't know if you ever do that but i feel like something that's really helped me out a ton recently especially on shows where I'm like having a hard time getting started is like making a to-do list and really breaking it down into like super small steps so for example I'm like okay today you have to work on this sequence and the sequence you need to make that beat and that beat and that beat happen and then sometimes I'm like or for example sometimes it can be like today you're gonna clean up 10 shots and having and I draw the 10 little boxes mm-hmm. and every time I finish a shot check I like <laughs> yeah I check little it little mini celebration yeah, yeah Everybody, and I well. feel so good and I I see it like kind of like I don't know like this has really helped me out yeah. like kind of recently because then I'm like okay it helps me get in the flow or like build up the motivation and for the list sometimes I'm like very like okay remember you have to do like a note here add this there i don't know uh do you... maybe to do list really helps because it, it, when you have all the things floating around you in your head it can feel like a bunch little of like things. fast little flies zooming around and and you, yeah. you, you can it can be hard to quantify them and they're and you feel like you're forgetting one and whatever but if you make a little list and you check it off oh, it so you good. you feel you get a little you you feel a little boost every time you you check one off it feels like you're moving forward in a passage passage in of time and you're not yeah. in just like an endless work stasis <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah yeah and then you can just kind of like pump yourself up you're like only two more tasks come on i can do it in an hour or something <laughs> yeah. and then i'm done with today's work uh yeah sometimes i'll do little checklists i don't think i've i've done quite as intensive checklists but yeah just little ones i feel like i mostly just break up like i need to do like i'll do like a one fifth of a board a day or something like that yeah you know? like what's your like health habits around storyboarding i'm asking that because health the second habits. that's a good question keep that work-life balance it can be mental health or it can be like physical health yeah 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 uh i have lots of answers around that because i feel like that's been a journey for me 
I used to do a tendonitis stuff a lot. You're getting swole because of all the heavy lifting <laughs> that you're doing, doing like three jobs at once. No, I'm just, I'm joking. Sorry. I sometimes go to the gym, but not as much as I should. But I do yoga. Yoga is really wonderful. Um, keeps me happy. Mm-hmm. Keeps my back in pretty good shape. Got the standing desk that I don't use enough. Let's see. I try to take breaks like every 45 minutes or an hour. I try and stand up and get moving around just for my brain and for my arm. Like when I was having really bad tendonitis, every like 20 minutes I would get up and stand around, try and do things other outside of drawing. My brain doesn't like it when I do like all day draw sessions. I really can't do uh, late night sessions anymore, like all nighters, you know? Mm. So like the time management thing, Mm. that's mainly because like I get really depressed whenever I do all nighters now. So I really avoid like, like the last minute thing, like the last minute push. I avoid like the college stuff mm. now. Therapy's great. I don't do that as much anymore, but it's good. I feel like it's, yeah, it's super useful. I feel like, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that I feel therapy is being like normalized in your generations. I definitely think it's really important, especially it's because expensive, for artists. But it's great. Well, if you get, <laughs> if you manage to get a union job, yeah. um, sh- shout out to Optum. Oh, yeah. Optum through the union. You only pay five dollars for a session for our insurance. Yeah. So if you get a union job and you haven't gone to therapy, <laughs> go through <it>. Optum. <laughs> Find yourself a therapist. <laughs> can, I, can I say a quick thing that yeah. I've been doing? Oh yeah. Um. So th- it, it it seems silly, but it's been helping a lot. I think that a lot of the time, the way that our minds work is we're sort of hardwired to focus on negative things and i think that's probably an evolutionary thing i think that we're like oh like you know the danger is more important or whatever but it's i I think it's the reason why even if you get like a hundred positive comments one negative comment will ruin your whole thing or you'll you could have like a, a full day where everything was really nice and then you have a bad thing happen at the end and you're like oh that was a bad day one of the things that i've been doing is when i notice that i feel happy or satisfied or proud or I feel good, I let myself sit in that moment. And I repeat to myself that like, I, th- I feel really good. Mm-hmm. I'm really proud. You know, I, like, and, and it could be just like, like eating a delicious snack that you're like really into whatever, wh- whatever it is, but like trying to like, sit in and register happy moments throughout your day, instead of just letting them go by so that when you go back and remember whether anything good happen during your day you have there's just a a little bit more of a moment that you can i feel like that probably builds on itself too i feel like the more you do that like the more your like neural pathways like dig deeper you know and like each time you do that like it becomes a little bit easier to do that like when i use and and it sounds it sounds cheesy but i I don't know it's been nice i I, um i was talking whenever i was going to therapy i was it sounds a lot better than like how my therapist was putting it which is like he was like you just need to microdose on all just go outside and microdose on all you know uh, and i was like uh, i don't know about that buddy <laughs> wait is that like a w e yeah awe? like oh the yeah, wonder of actually, right. on all. oh no yeah. like microdose on all oh, that's a cute yeah, cat like, well <laughs> look, it's a butterfly. like you're looking at cute like you're stuff. microdosing on like beautiful <laughs> like the aesthetic of life and i'm like I, I don't think this is working so anymore, funny. but then, yeah, I don't know. Then I heard like an NPR article about it and like, it sounds like sound advice. It just was pitched to me in like a really terrible way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Sometimes that's why I'm like, I will obsess over like a mental health kind of like specific topic and like read up a ton on it, like a million articles or like a million like people asking the question about that specific topic and read all of the answers because i feel like i need to find the way that is phrased that makes sense to me yeah because somebody can give you the idea but if it's not phrased correctly for you then it doesn't really hit as much yeah, exactly yeah yeah because to me it was like but it <sighs> mushrooms man. it's like you it's like you don't need mushrooms it's like life is your mushrooms you know <laughs> like super christian in a way yeah it is uh, like kind of like I'm like high on Jesus totally. or something. 
it's funny though it's funny look that you bring that up because i do believe like the the gratitude thing and the whole like like noticing when something is fun and like it, like bringing that into a room like into a writer room i feel like uh and i noticed like my writing mentor she tends to do that where she just kind of is like always just positive and encouraging and you always kind of want to keep that positive feeling mm -hmm. rolling to keep people being engaged and fun and and come up with new ideas yeah. when you finish a drawing look at that drawing and be like i i made i made yeah. this this is cool that i made this and because a lot of people like that they'll do a drawing but post it on social media they'll move on to the next thing and like and then your next interaction with that drawing is like oh it didn't reach as many people as i hoped it did or you know or whatever but like you drew this amazing thing mm -hmm. that like is going to make people happy or more importantly should you just making you happy and uh yeah i don't know speaking of microdosing sometimes it can feel like uh, these interactions with some of our favorite artists are all too short but unfortunately this episode is coming to an end and the and we're coming down from this high, this absolute buzz from talking to Alex Klein. Uh, I just wanted to um, say thank you uh, to Alex and thank you to our listeners for uh, an another awesome creative block. Yeah. And with that, that is the end of this creative block. Alex, thank you so much for being our guest and sharing your story. And thanks to our listeners. Follow us on Twitter at Creative Block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask our guests. Really, you can ask us anywhere on any of the platforms that we're on. Uh, huge thanks to our editor, Clemens, for editing the podcast and Marco for helping us to produce the show. If you love our show, then support us on Patreon. Becoming a patron gets you early access to interviews as well as bonus episodes. Um, you can also support us by commenting, sharing, and liking our content on all the different platforms. It really helps a ton for um, you guys to just kind of spread the word. Uh, click the link in the description of this episode. I have been your host, V. And I was Sean. Keep being creative. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.